Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Happy Monday. And uh, I'm going to try my best to do the hosting for Coffee with Father Gray today because we're having some internet problems, but that's fine. Happy snowy Monday. It is snowing. Today is the feast day of St. Joseph because usually it would be yesterday, but we're doing it today. So more about that in a second. As we always do, let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Great. Well, let's just dig in. Let's see what happens next. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Just lost the readings. One second. Ah, it's okay. <laughs> that slow, slow. Okay. Spinning wheel. We're having a technical issues day. It's fine. It's all good. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll pull them up on my phone. Okay. Because that'll be fun. U.S.C.E. Okay. A reading from the book of Samuel. The Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins and I will make his kingdom firm. It is he who shall build a house for my name, and I will make his royal throne firm forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The son of David will live forever. The son of David will live forever. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. The son of David will live forever. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant, forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. The son of David will live forever. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him and my covenant with him stands firm. The son of David will live forever. A reading from the book of Romans. Brothers and sisters, it was not through the law that the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants that he would inherit the world. 
but through the righteousness that comes from faith. For this reason, it depends on faith so that it may be a gift and the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not to those who only adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead, and calls into being what does not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, that he would become the father of many nations. According to what was said, thus shall your descendants be. That is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, O Lord. They never cease to praise you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus because she will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. St. Joseph Day is a big day. And so because of that, therefore, when it happens that March 19th, St. Joseph Day, is on a Sunday, like in Lent, then we have to move it to another day like today, the next day. So that's why today is St. Joseph Day, just so happens to be. <clears throat> Incidentally, uh, there are, are a couple little calendar gymnastic things that happen this time of year. Since this is coffee and it's already kind of strange, I'll kind of walk you through them a little bit. So the earliest that Easter could possibly be would be like March 23rd or something. And that would mean that St. Joseph Day would be like during Holy Week. And when that happens, you have to put it like after Holy Week into Easter, but like after the Easter octave. So like way far in the future, which is why sometimes it's in April. And the same is true for um, the Feast of the Annunciation, which is on Saturday. Anyway, cool. Strange things, but that's not the case this year. It just merely transferred one day because it happened to be on Sunday. There you go. So St. Joseph, the universal patron of the church, the patron of everyone and everything. That's kind of a St. Joseph thing. Now, when we think of St. Joseph, hopefully we also think of who else has the name. So Joseph is a rather important name at the end of the book of Genesis. This other guy, Joseph, who has, of course, a long and fun story, and there's a coat involved that has many colors you know and all of that and there might be dancing and singing because there might be a musical as well but the point of that story was that joseph was the one who took care of his brothers even though they thought like maybe we'll kill him oh no let's not kill him that's kind of too mean let's say that sell him into slavery that's better recall all those things that happened at in Genesis. So I'm, I'm looking in my Bible, like Genesis chapter 36, and that whole story, and it's kind of a problem. But when Joseph gets to Egypt, he ends up becoming rather important in Egypt. Important not because like the story needs him to be, but rather because they, they need him to be. And he's the one who administers the grain. 
And this is a rather important part. Of course, it also sets up how his brothers end up coming to him and asking for some food help in a time of famine, and they don't recognize him, which is kind of fun. And he's able to kind of bring the family back together and they don't starve, which is nice. But this grain aspect, being the one who holds the grain. Well, it's also kind of a setup for who Saint Joseph is, Joseph as in and Mary and Jesus. In the Holy Family, he has a role. He's the one who has a profession. He's a carpenter. <laughs> he is the breadwinner of the house. Now, I'm not a huge fan of using titles like that. You know, in this, in this day and age, it kind of sounds a little bit anachronistic. But Joseph, though, is definitely the one who supports the family. That's part of his role. That's what he does. Now, on this subject, I'd like to shape our reflection on St. Joseph today. So obviously, if we're going to talk about anything with Jesus and have bread somewhere in the offing, whether that be grain or wheat or bread that's already baked or, you know, the Eucharist, there's probably a rather important connection there. And I think so too. So St. Joseph, who is such an important saint that we do these kind of calendar gymnastics to be able to celebrate him well, being the universal patron of the whole church, everyone and everything, and being the one who is the in charge of the household of the Holy Family has this rather special aspect of being, you know, also Joseph the patriarch, the one with the providing of the food. Now, just not just in kind of an instrumental way, in kind of a simple, this is just what the office is, the function, but in a more kind of Eucharistic theological way that gets interesting. Remember St. Ignatius as an of Antioch of Rome, not a more modern St. Ignatius, but a super, super ancient St. Ignatius, like dying in the Colosseum with the wild beasts, St. Ignatius. Before he died, he wrote this rather lovely letter, and in it, he, he had this thing to say, which is, he, I am the wheat of God, says St. Ignatius, I am the wheat of God, to be ground by the teeth of the wild beasts, so they may come, may become the pure bread of Christ. Here we have a fun little bit of theological reflection from a very early time in the church that I think spans this idea of the grain from Joseph the patriarch to Joseph as in Mary and Joseph and, and Jesus to also all the Christians, because after all, St. Joseph is the patron of everyone and everything. So who is the grain? <laughs> you know, and as a Eucharistic people, we're all about that pure bread of Christ that St. Ignatius was talking about. And as a people of God, we are very much all about having that grain. The <clears throat> work of the, of the Christian has many things. And like St. Joseph, who supports the Holy Family, all Christians are kind of one of those pillars of the church things required to give support to the church, but not just materially. There's also the aspect of what that grain is. We are the ones who very much revere that pure bread of Christ, who hold that pure bread of Christ. We're very interested in the increment, the growth of what that grain is that leads to it. We are the grain, we are the bread. Christ is the bread, we are too. <laughs> and it's not just a simple thing, and it's not even just in the kind of the idea of the sacrament, but also of who we are. So on this particular St. Joseph day, it's worth remembering that in much the same way as St. Joseph is the one who cares for the Holy Family, we Christians who are under his patronage also care for the Holy Family of God, the church. All of us are interested in making that possible, very much the administration of grain and so on. Throughout scripture, you get this, this trope that comes up of uh, the wheat that if it's good, will produce you know, 30, 60, 100 fold. 
and also that the good steward of the household is the one who gives them their food at the proper time and also is the one who takes care of the 30, 60, or 100-fold. It, it, it comes up over and over again. It's the model for what sainthood is, actually. The one who is a good administrator of the goods of the church, especially if, if, if the saints in question are like the churchy saints. Uh, saints, someone, bishop of somewhere, you know, like th those kinds of saints, especially. But in a real sense, because that bread is throughout the church, it is the church, the church is the church of the Eucharist, then it also has that really cool aspect too. In much the same way as Joseph, fulfilling his namesake, Joseph of the Old Testament, is the one who provides the bread for Christ. I mean, literally, he does. We also are part of that same kind of economy of household that we are the ones who provide the grain christ is the one who provides the eucharist we are the eucharist and it's all part of the same one thing and so we celebrate saint joseph not just because we say he's the patron of everyone and everything but because in a real way saint joseph is this very small microcosm of the whole church he holds the whole church what he does is very much what the church does. And isn't that cool? A worthwhile reflection for us on this particular Monday, which isn't a Lenten Monday. It's not. Because it's St. Joseph, today is a day that is a huge solemnity. It's not even like a Lenten Sunday, which is like a day off from Lent. No, this is just a, it's just a wonderful celebration day. That's it. So enjoy. All right, as we always do, let's bring our prayers together and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Bishop Oscar and for all bishops, that they may be protected from evil and from all those who wish malice against them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents, that they find the strength to catechize and be examples of Christ's love for their children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that anyone experiencing harmful effects from natural disasters will help will find help from their neighbors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community that those who are in positions of authority make decisions based on Christian values. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For whom and what else shall we pray? Through the intercession of St. Monica. Thank you. Pray for all of our family and friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Defend with unfailing protection, O Lord, we pray, the family you have nourished with the bread of the Eucharist, as they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph, and graciously keep safe your gifts among them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Okay, we survived without Anthony having to be here. Hope his internet fixes itself eventually. Let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. 
and by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints. In mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and the Church. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Fantastic. <laughs> Everyone have a lovely day, a lovely celebration of St. Joseph, and we'll see you again tomorrow. All right. God bless. Bye-bye.